Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Come on. It's a good day. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. It's so great that you're joining us. If you don't know who I am, my name is Daniel and I'm the lead pastor around here. And it's just such an honor to have you joining us in person. Or if you're online, we're so, so thrilled that you're joining us as well, because, um, you know, we believe 100 percent that we serve a God that wants to interact with his people, that he loves his kids. And so we hope that as you kind of step into this morning, as you step maybe even further into the church, that that's what you experience. We really do. And so our prayer is that. Now, I have just a couple of things I want to say before I kind of jump into the message. The first is, is that we're starting a new series today uh, called God Wants to Heal You. Now, I talked about that last week, but I just want to do a little kind of description because I think it's going to be helpful. And I want to talk to two different types of people. I want to talk to people that would say, yes, I'm a follower of Jesus. Like, I want to speak to you for just a second. And that is that when you think think about this series. It's for you, but it's also for people that you know that maybe have questions about God's activity in this area. And so what I want to ask you to do is listen to today's message, interact in today's message, but then what I want you to do is think about who can you share this message with and then invite them back to church this next week. Because I really believe that as we go through this series, there's going to be things that the Lord wants to impart to some people that are going to change their life. I don't know if you believe that, but I believe that. I believe that when people interact with God's word and his truth, that life change is possible. And so I want to encourage you to take hold of this and share it with somebody, all right? Now, for anybody that's here today that maybe you came for the first time or maybe you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, one, I just want to say thank you for being here. I'm just so glad that you're here. I pray and I hope that something I say today would speak to your spirit because the Bible says that you have a spirit inside you and that God wants to interact with that spirit. And so if you would simply open yourself up to that possibility, I believe 100% that God wants to meet you in this space at this moment. I believe it. I believe it's not by accident that you're here. And so I want to pray before we start. God, I thank you for the fact that your word is active. It's alive. The Bible says that it cuts deeper than any two-edged sword. And so, Father, would you... Heal us where we need to be healed. Would you maybe cut us where we need to be cut so that we might be able to truly live into, truly live into who you've called us to be. Father, we need your help. Would you open us up today? We're, we're, we're listening. We're ready. And if that's you, if you're like, yep, I'm, I'm there. I'm, 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 I'm ready. I'm listening. I'm full of faith. Just say to the Lord, I receive this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, give me your best because I've got some. I I mean, I have had this has been stored up in me, guys, for months. And so I'll give you my best if you'll give me yours. Uh, Believe God is going to minister to all of us here. Now, you you may or may not know this, but probably two months ago, I I can't even remember now. uh, My sister-in-law, Sarah, uh, had a a massive... um, Uh, pulmonary embolism that led to a heart attack that led to multiple strokes in her brain like that 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 happened that was real we met with the neurologist this week and my my wife was meeting with the neurologist and the neurologist indicated that based on what he sees um, her brain went without oxygen for over an hour Think about that for a second, over an hour. And so what that means is, is that her brain had no oxygen. And we usually, like if we're thinking in the natural, we know where that goes. Like it, it usually leads to the brain not functioning anymore, yes? Yeah. And so, so, so this is real. But the thing I want to say to you today is this church believes in healing. And so we begin to pray. We began to seek the Lord. We called the church together and began to seek God on this matter. And I can tell you that whatever the enemy intended for harm, God turned it. God turned it. 
And, and you can argue with me about healing and you can argue with me with about miracles or whether or not they happen. I get it, guys. But I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, my faith was encouraged in that moment because I saw something I'd never seen before. So I present that to you for consideration. Because, see, I believe and this church believes in healing. And so what I'd ask for you to do is open up your heart to the possibility that if God can do it for Sarah, that maybe, just maybe, he can do it for you too. Think about that. Maybe, just maybe, not just that he can, but that he wants to. So, so, so that's, that's where we start today. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of this fella. His name is Oral Roberts. Now, you may have known him or maybe watched him, maybe even went to one of his healing crusades. Uh, maybe you think he's a crackpot, you know. I don't know what you think about Oral Roberts, you know. Uh, but, but one of the things I know about Oral Roberts is that I, there is a line of people that would say that through his ministry, they were healed. Like, I mean, that, that's just, that's what I'd say. Now, we can get into the semantics of, well, it's psychosomatic that, you know, they're just, they're just faking it, you know. I mean, they're, they're bringing out crutches to people who don't need crutches. I mean, I get it. I get all the skeptical kind of thoughts and even some of the bad actors, people, because there are bad actors out there. There are people that take the things of God and try to leverage it for their own purposes. And look, I don't ever want to be in that person's shoes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't ever want to be in that person's shoes. Like, because at some point, you got to stand before a holy God. Like, I, you know what I mean? So let's just acknowledge that, that that's a possibility, that people have done that. People have absolutely done it, and they've been doing it all the way back to Bible times. There were people even in the Bible that tried to use God for their own purposes. And God's not interested in that at all. But I, but, but, but I want to say this. Oral Roberts had this amazing way of talking about healings. And he painted this metaphor that I want to share with you. And this will be our metaphor for the entire series. But what he said was this. He called sickness, listen to me, disharmony. Okay, just he called sickness disharmony. And what he did is he explained that we all are sick because we are all out of sync with God's plan. We are all out of sync with what, what God's intent was. Now, as a result of sin and all the things that have happened because of sin, we now are standing in disharmony with God's created order. Does that make sense? And so what, what, what Oral Roberts was saying is that, that there is a disharmony that we experience as believers as unbelievers, there's a disharmony in this world. There's a brokenness in this world that, that is so destructive, so hurtful, and so, so messed up. <laughs> right? We all see it. We've experienced it. We, we, we know what that's about. And so what he tried to do is capture, just for all of us, that one, we're all sick. <laughs> we, we're all in need of a healing. You may not need physical healing today. You may need emotional healing. You may need spiritual healing. You, need, you may need healing in a relationship, but I don't know what it is for you today, but I'm here to tell you today that God wants to heal you. That's what we have to understand. Now, I know that skepticism sometimes rises up in us, but let me ask you a question. Who do you think that's from? If, if, if doubt or skepticism shows up on your doorstep and you open the door, do you think that's coming from God? And so my point is, is that we have to consider something. That God is who he says he is. And God does what he says he'll do. We can trust that. There's integrity in that. And so it's important that we grab hold of this idea that God wants to heal us. God wants to heal us from the sicknesses in our life. I hope, oh, I hope that you believe that. I hope that you press in a little bit further as we go through this series. Because, see, sickness really is disharmony. It really is disharmony with God. And so my hope and prayer for all of us is that as we go through this series, we will get synced up again and start believing again that any disharmony in our lives, any disharmony, that God wants to do something about it. 
He wants to do something about it. And so we have to start by knowing and believing this important truth. And if you're just like, if you're like, okay, tell me the truth and then I'm leaving, fine. I'll give it to you. If you don't want to say for the rest of the time, that's fine. But, 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 but here it is. God wants to heal you. That's it. Like you could leave now. Unless you don't believe that. So if you don't believe that, or you kind of believe that, or you're kind of not sure, you're 99.9%, then I encourage you to stick around. Because I believe God wants to heal you, and I believe he wants to heal me, and I believe he wants to heal people in this world, whether they know him or not. This is what God is about. This is the God that we serve. And now some of you who are OCD are having a hard time paying attention right now because of the flickering that's going on with the lights. I'm asking you to work really hard not to be distracted. We will, we will fix those lights at some point, but they are broken today. All right? So stay with me. I can put any picture. And I didn't do this because I thought it might draw your attention away from my point. But I could have put a picture of somebody maybe that you've seen on television that has described themselves as a healer. Okay, like I could I could I could put that on there and you may have all kinds of things that go through your mind when I do that. But here's the thing I want you to see that picture, whatever that means to you, whatever happened with that picture, whatever that person did with that, whatever it is, doesn't change what God has done. It doesn't change what God's about. And I'm going to tell you something. You've got to grab hold of this is that my experience, your experience never must never determine my God. Now, we live in a world that everything is, seems to be determined by someone's experience or their opinion. Right? Come on, we all know it's true. That's the world we live in. But I'm just here to tell you that your experience of something, your opinion of something, doesn't affect who God is. I know that might be hard for you, depending on your level of hubris, but at the end of the day, it doesn't. And so you've got to get this. Because, because, see, my experience never determines who God is or what God does. I love the way Benjamin Franklin said this. And he said this. He said, experience is the best teacher. Watch this. But a fool will learn from no other. We've heard that. Experience is the best teacher. But he says, a fool will learn from no other. And that's the point I'm trying to get to. If, if, if experience is your master, I promise you, you are coming to wrong conclusions about God. So, so, so we've got to keep that in our brain and keep this truth. God wants to heal you regardless of your experience of that matter. Now, I have just a few things, a few thoughts on healing that I want all of us to get our brain around. The first is, is that God sent Jesus to heal us and make us whole. So God wants to heal you, but he sent his son to demonstrate the fact. Do you understand? Like, it wasn't something that he just talked about and said, hey, you know, someday I'm going to get around to this. No, no. He actually put it into practice. And when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into this world, he sent him to heal us and make us whole. Listen to what Jesus says. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus is speaking to the people and he says this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Right. He's he's proclaiming this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He's anointed by God. Come on. If you're anointed by God, that's a pretty good endorsement. So he's an anointed by God to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me, Jesus, to heal the brokenhearted. Did you catch the word heal? To proclaim liberty to the captives or freedom. Come on, we talk about freedom. Freedom to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind. More healing. To set a liberty on those who are oppressed. To give freedom to those who are oppressed. And then I love this. He says to proclaim the accepted year of the Lord. And so when Jesus showed up in space and time with skin on, he had a mission. And his mission was anointed by the Father 
to be demonstrated to the world so that all of us could experience the healing and the wholeness that comes from that relationship. You, you saw it, right? God had done this. Je Jesus clearly tells us that God anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recover sight to the blind, set, the liberties, uh, set liberty on those who are oppressed, and, and proclaim the accepted year of the Lord. That's what it says. My friends, that's a mouthful. That's a mission. That, that, I mean, that's, that's something. <laughs> and that something changed everything. It changed everything. There is nobody that's ever been that's done what Jesus has done. And so here, here's what I'm trying to get you to see. All of us, all of us have to notice that there's a purpose right here in all of those statements. There's one purpose. And it's this idea of God wants to heal us and make us whole. See, God wants to bring harmony back into our disharmony. God wants to bring healing into our sickness. God wants to bring wholeness into our unwholeness. See, God is working in that way for you and me, and he demonstrates that so clearly through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, I, I got to speed up. Listen to this. Jesus says this, and this is right after he preaches what's called the Sermon on the Mount. Right after that. After he preaches this Sermon on the Mount, he starts to do what? He starts to heal people. Like he literally starts to go out and he starts to heal people. And listen to this. This is in 8, Matthew 8, 5 through 7. He says this. The Bible says, Now when Jesus had entered Calpurnium, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Is what the Bible says. And then in verse 7. I love this. Jesus said. I'll come and I'll heal him. Like you, you know what I mean. It's just as a matter of fact. Like the centurion shows up. Says hey my, 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 my person is, is, is sick. Or they're, they're not feeling well. They, they have apparently they're paralyzed. They're tormented. And Jesus just says hey. I'll come and I'll heal him. And, I, and what I want you to hear today. Is that Jesus is saying the same thing to you. That Jesus is saying to all of us, I'll come and I'll heal him. And see, what happens is when we hear that, there's a part of us that thinks, is that true? Like, is that real? Is that true? Does Jesus really care that much about me? Like, to, that, that he would drop everything that he's doing in that moment? And, and that he would show up in your home? He would show up in this house and say to each one of us, oh, oh, of course I want to help you. Of course I want to heal you. Of course I'm coming. Yeah. I love that. See, God wants to show us this. Jesus came to heal us. Jesus came to make us whole. Here's another example. You've probably heard this one. This is in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 34. I'm going to read through it kind of fast, but listen to this story. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for how many years? 12 years, friends. 12 years. We complain about waiting in line at Starbucks. 12 years, the Bible says. Verse 26. And had suffered many things and many, many physicians, many physicians had tried to do all kinds of things. Hmm. I don't know your story today. That may be your story. Maybe you've been in it for a long time and many physicians have tried to do all kinds of things to heal you. They've poked you, they've prodded you, they've tested you, they've done all the things trying to determine with their mind what's the problem. So, goes on. She, she had spent all this time, she had spent all that she had and was no better. I can't imagine how defeating that felt. Do you know what I mean? To spend all of your time, all that you had. And then watch this. <laughs> Verse 27. When she had heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and she touched his garment. She heard about Jesus. Come on. Some of you may be hearing about Jesus for the first time today. 
She heard about Jesus and she came to Jesus. And it says that she came behind him and she touched his garment. And then in verse 28, for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. That word isn't just healing. That word is whole. So, so, so she's reaching for Jesus, and of course she's reaching for her healing. But she's also reaching to be whole. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she, listen to this, she felt in her body, she felt in her body, so the blood dries up, and she has a feeling. She felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. So, so she saw the blood dry up. So it was physical. It was real. She notices it. But do you notice she goes further? She, she, she actually feels that something's happening. And I want, to, I want to suggest to you today is that sometimes what happens is we see a miracle, but we're not always putting our faith to it. Yeah. We're not believing. We're not feeling that it's going to happen. And so she says, the Bible says that she felt in her body that she was healed of affliction. Verse 30. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that his power had gone out of him. So in other words, a woman touches him and he feels, I don't even understand this. There's a spiritual power. There is an exchange that happened. She touched the hem of his garment. Power leaves Jesus, goes into the woman, and she's healed. And Jesus like, who touched me? I love that. And then his disciples, if you keep reading, his disciples are like, what do you mean, Jesus? Who touched you? There's a multitude of people around you. There's a crowd. Of course, people are touching you. But Jesus knew that the touch of this woman was different than the touch of everybody else. Yeah. Do you see what I'm getting at? She was touching Jesus with a possibility. Yeah. See, 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 she was touching Jesus with potential. Yeah. She was touching Jesus because she had heard that Jesus could do something about her situation. Yeah. So she's touching him in what? Faith. And so you go on. He says, who touched me? And this woman says, oh, it was me. <laughs> She's like, she knew it was her. She's like, it's me, Jesus. I did it. It was me. <laughs> I love this. Oh, she falls down before him and she worships her king. And then Jesus says to her, and look how tender he is with her. Daughter. He doesn't say, woman. He just says, Daughter. I think that's significant. I think sometimes the reason we can't reach for Jesus, reach for the Father, is because, see, we don't see ourselves as son. We don't see ourselves as daughter. Because, come on, people, if you're a parent and your kid reaches for you, what are you going to do? Right? What are you going to do? They ask you for something. What are you going to do? Of course you're going to give them what they need. Of course, you're going to reach back. And so he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Her faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Jesus speaks that over her. And see, at the moment that she touched his garment, her faith went rushing out of her to meet the healing power of Jesus. Her I love that, right? Can you picture it? Like she's got like faith in her body and, and she reaches out and when she does there's this faith that's released it's like you know that's like the power coming out of her hand or something but she's reaching in faith and when she reaches in faith the healing power comes rushing out of Jesus back into her body and she's healed in a moment wow see the difference between everybody in the crowd is they were reaching different they may have been there because they were curious you may be here today because you were curious you may be here today because you wondered what I'd say about healing. I don't know why you're here, but I know this, that sometimes we can take a step, but what happens is we stop and we don't reach in faith. 
And so my prayer for you today is that you would reach in faith today for your healing or even for your own salvation. That you would reach for the one that can do everything that he said. See, God wants to heal you and he sent his son, Jesus, to heal you and make you whole. This is the truth. And so they were, she was touching different. See, you can be around him but never be healed because you don't reach in faith. Do you understand? See, you can be around Jesus all the time. There are a lot of religious people that show up to church and you're around Jesus. But you may never reach for him because here's the thing I know. If I told you that Jesus could heal you today, if I told you that right now, if you reached out your hand, Jesus would heal you of whatever infirmity that you have right now, what would you do? You would be double dumb to not reach for it. Yes? Like, I mean, if I could guarantee it, right, 100%. Of course you'd reach for it. If I said I have a million dollars and all you got to do is push me over and take it. That's all you have to do. And I won't even be mad at you. Just take it. You'd be like, all right. You go and push me over. Take the money and run. Jesus is offering you healing. Will you take it? Will you reach out your hand? And the reason we don't reach out our hand is because we actually, if we're really honest, we don't really believe he can do it. I know that stings, friends, but that's true. Because if we believed he could do it, we would reach out our hand. And so, friends, let's get this right. Let's let's begin to understand that God wants to heal us. He sent his son to make us whole and heal us. Oh, it's so good. See, see, there's no distance between you and your healing, you and Jesus, when you're believing what God has said. See, see, you are close to your healing because you're close to Jesus. And if Jesus is sitting right next to you and he says, stretch out your hand, what should you do? See what I'm getting at? You guys getting this? This making sense to you? Oh, I hope it is. Because this is what I think God is trying to teach his church right now. And so Jesus was sent for this purpose. But here's something important for us to remember. Stay with me. Here's the second thought I want to give you. Is sickness, fear, and demon possession are not gifts from God. Do you understand? They're not gifts from God. Like, if anybody ever told you that your sickness, right, or, or, or if, if, if that thing that's ailing you, that thing that's afflicting you, that the fear that's overwhelming you, or even that possession that's happening, you need to understand that that's not a gift from God. Friends, that's not from God. He's not like, whoo, yeah, I'm so excited today. I am going to light some kids up. I'm going to give them disease and fear and affliction. Oh, it's going to be a good day in heaven. He's not doing that. He loves you. Why would he do that? Why would he cause you to be sick? You see what I'm getting at? And I think sometimes we get this stuck in our brain. And yet Luke 19.10 tells us that the son of man came into this world to seek and save that which was lost. So all of us, disharmony, sickness, disharmony, all of it. Jesus sent or God sent his son to seek and save that which was broken, that which was lost, that which was sick and diseased. And see, in John 10, 10 says the thief comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So if the thief is coming to steal, kill, and destroy, that's his MO. That's how he's breaking it down for us every day. Jesus says in opposition to that, that Jesus came to give us what? abundant life. I love the word abundant. I love that descriptor. Isn't that a great descriptor? He doesn't just start with life. He says, I want to give you abundant life. I want you to experience life on a whole nother level. That's the words of Jesus. He's telling you why he came. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. I've been anointed for this purpose. And he comes into this world and he's doing these things. And I love Luke 5, Luke 5, or Luke 9, 56. Look this, look this. He didn't come to destroy men. He didn't come to destroy women. It says that he came, listen, he came to save them. See, the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And if you're experiencing killing, stealing, and destroying, 
If you're experiencing disharmony, if you're experiencing uh, brokenness, if you're experiencing sickness, blindness, whatever that is-ness, the Bible says that it's not from God. See, Jesus states that he has come to save the people who have felt, listen, they felt robbed. They felt like somebody's trying to kill them. They felt like somebody's trying to destroy them. You ever felt that way? You ever feel like the odds were against you? You ever felt like the deck was stacked against you? You ever felt like you wake up and you know you feel like a worm? You ever felt this way? Not from God. All of that is coming from the enemy. And Jesus wants to break off Satan's power in your life and give you the abundant life that he talks. He wants to give you wholeness. He wants to give you a harmonious, healed life abundantly. Oh, Jesus, I feel. Oh, uh, Lord, would you penetrate? Would you penetrate our hearts right now? Please, if you're receiving this in your brain, If you're receiving this in a scientific way, it's making sense to you. It seems reasonable. It seems rational. Thank you for receiving it there. But could you go a step further? Could you believe? Could you believe that it's true? Because there's lots of people that know all the right things, but they never activate it with faith. They never activate it with faith. And so I love this this quote. See, to Jesus, sickness and fear and demon possession were not gifts sent from the Father, but they were evils. His Father had sent him to heal. Those who had been stricken by sickness of their body, of their mind, listen, listen, were not to be pitied. Like, man, I'm really sorry that's happening to you. There's nothing I can do about it. I just am sorry. Now, sometimes that feels good, right? That somebody empathizes with your situation. It's nice to hear. But watch this. We're not to be pitied. He says their condition aroused him. Listen, with the deepest compassion, causing him to offer abundant life to those who would believe. Can you, can, you, can you see it? Can you say with me, deepest compassion? Say it with me. Deepest compassion. Jesus doesn't pity you. Jesus isn't looking at your situation thinking, oh, there's nothing I can do about that. Jesus looks at your situation and says, I'm going to do something about that. And the reason I'm going to do something about it is because I have the deepest compassion for God's kids. So much so it's demonstrated on the cross that he was willing to give his life for it. So guys, we got to know that we serve a God that wants to heal us. We serve a God that has deep compassion for us. Oh, God, would you help us to see it? Mark, Mark, oh, I love this. Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said to him, if, 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 come on, everybody say, if, if you believe, if you believe, All things are possible. (laughs) Oh, that's so good. And you know, our little brains, our little scientific minds, you know what we do? We're like, yeah, that sounds good, but that's not my experience. That sounds good. But let's stop there. And let's just stay here. If you believe, if you believe, and so here's the question, can you believe? Could you believe for a moment that you serve a God that wants to do all of this? Like, could you do that? Could you step into that? Could you let all the shackles fall off your life? Could you let all the experiences fall off your life? Could you let all the abuse and all of the things that have been told to you, all the things that are standing in the way of you believing that if you simply believed that all things would become possible? Oh, friends. Oh, I I hope that you grab hold of this. See, we, we, have, we have to understand that, see, Jesus loves us. He has compassion for us. He wants to heal us. God is more than willing to heal you. Yes. See, see, what God is able to do, he's willing to do. See, we, do you get that? And see, what happens sometimes is we don't see something go down and we're like, well, he must not be willing to do something. 
I think we got to challenge that. See, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus is the very expression of God's concern and compassion, isn't he? Like the fact that he came into the world. I mean, think about it. Jesus is God's concern and passion in the flesh. He sent his son so that I could be saved. He sent his son so that I could be healed. Are you getting it? He sent his son so that you could be whole. Oh, friends, if you would just get this. Here's the third thought. You're like, there's more? Here's the third thought. Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So in other words, not only did he fix that woman's problem in that moment, who he called daughter, he fixed it for once and for all. Do you understand? It wasn't just in the moment because see, you know what we do. He's like, yeah, we, well, because of course, Jesus is Jesus. He was on the earth. He touched the woman. It makes sense. He did it. And so in that moment, space and time, it happened. But you say this, watch it, watch it, watch it. You say, but that was then. See, that was then. Jesus was on the earth then, right? He, he did it then. And what I'm trying to get you to see is he did it for always. See, he bore our sin. He bore our infirmities. He bore our sickness. And here, I'm about to share some of the most beautiful scripture with you. Just stay tuned. Watch this. Matthew 8, 17. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying, he himself took our, our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. Did you know the Bible says that? He took our infirmities and he bore our sickness. First Peter 2.24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That's where it happened. Once and for all, on the tree. That we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, which deals with your salvation. But then watch this. By whose stripes we were healed. See, often we see this only for salvation, but we forget that he also finished sickness. <laughs> he also finished disease. See, he also finished a lot of things, and it's not just salvation. I love this phrase. Listen to me. I, I, wish I, I, I wish I had this dedicated to my heart. I could just like spit it out, but I don't have it yet. But listen, Jesus came to take off of you what the devil put on you. Amen. Jesus came to, to, to put back in you what the devil took out of you. Amen. Jesus came to put back on you what the devil took off of you. Yeah. And, and here it is. And Jesus, watch this, Jesus came to take out of you what the devil put in you. It's the ultimate reversal. It's the ultimate reversal. And friends, what I'm trying to get you to see is that it's not just about salvation. It's about so much more. It's about your freedom. It's about your purpose. It's about all the infirmities and all the sickness and all the disease being taken and finished. And some might say, well, Jesus isn't here anymore. Right? It's true. You see him? Jesus? Where you at? And I want to just say emphatically, wrong. See, see, he is here. Don't believe me? All right. One final thought and I'm done. Jesus didn't leave us powerless. So in other words, he didn't finish the work in order that the work just stayed there. He finished the work so that his people could pick up the baton and do the work that he has called us to do. He calls us to build the kingdom of God. He sent his son, he sent his spirit so that we could take that work that he's finished and continue it. So people that say, well, Jesus ain't here anymore. Jesus, that, does stuff, that stuff happened back then. That stuff doesn't happen now. Come on, fooey, fooey, fooey. <laughs> you haven't heard fooey three times, have you? John 15, 26, listen to this. But when the helper, which is the Holy Spirit, comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, 
the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, look at this, he will testify of me. It's not just a testimony of truth. It's a testimony of power. Do you understand? It's not just a testimony of truth. It's a testimony of power. And so when the Holy Spirit comes, there is power that is released into the people of God for the work of God. And so if Jesus healed people, if Jesus healed people, come on, you starting to get it? You're starting to get the conclusion here. If Jesus healed people and the power that, that, that raised Jesus from the dead is also available to you and me, in other words, he lives in us, then that means that power is available to you and me to do all the works that Jesus did. And it's not even the works that he did. He says you'll do more. Oh, I'm preaching good today. So, so, so the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Watch this. Matthew 10, 7 through 8. And look, look, look. And as you go preaching, saying, listen, listen, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Christian. Christian. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. What? Cast out demons. Oh, no. Freely you have received. Now freely give. You know what I love about this? It has nothing to do about money. It has nothing to do about money. He's telling us to give the healing. That's what he's saying. He's saying, look, you've gotten all of this from God. You've received the Holy Spirit. Now go out into the world and do the things that God has called you to do. Freely give healing. Come on, people. Let's give some healing to this world. Let's lay our hands on people and believe that God could do something. Come on. Let's believe again that God could heal people. God could heal COVID. God can heal disease. And last time I checked, COVID is a disease. See, God can do these things. Not you, but God's power in you to accomplish. Wait for it. Wait for it. John 14, 12, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also and greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. Jesus left to go to the father. He sent the Holy Spirit to you, empowering you for the mission that God has called you to do. Come on, friends. He, 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 he now has given you the power and he says, oh, you thought what I did was cool. You thought what happened to that woman that day was cool. You wait for it. You, you start believing me. You start believing and freely giving healing to people. Freely giving. And you are going to see some things. Oh, And all of us right now should be like. That's what you should be like. Excited, expectant. Because if I was just to ask you, we're sitting, we're sitting at a table having coffee. And I just look you in the eye and I say, hey. Do you want to see God heal people? What would you say? I mean, seriously. So let's get on with it. Let's believe. Let's actually believe in what God says. And so here's your two thoughts for you as I end. Number one, believe that God wants to heal. Could you do that? Could you begin to step into that reality? And if you think I'm a liar, then you search the scriptures and find out for yourself whether or not God is a healer. And then number two, we got to release it. So what I'm asking you to do is I want you to pray for people to be healed. You're like, Pastor, you do that. No, of course I do. But you do it too. Could you believe for somebody? Could you give healing to somebody? Could you be the vessel that brings healing into someone's life? Maybe someone right now is suffering with 12 years of suffering. And maybe you're the one. You realize there's no other plan, right? You're the plan. Like God put it in your hands to usher in the kingdom of God, friends. And so, so you're the plan. And so every person that we don't pray for and believe for healing, 
That means we're not doing our job. Christians, we've got to do our job. Whew, thank you, Jesus. I want to pray. Let's pray. God, I know that there are people in this room that need a healing. They need a touch from you right now. And I pray, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like beg you. I don't need to beg you. You're a father, you love your kids. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, anybody in this room or anybody that is listening to the sound of my voice, wherever you are in the world right now, I want to be a point of contact for you. And what I'm, what I'm asking you to do is I want you to see me as a point of contact. And what I want you to do is simply stretch out your hand like you're reaching. You're reaching in faith for your healing right now. Reach out. Reach towards me if that helps. Be a point of contact. Just reach wherever you are. If you're in a coffee shop, if you're in a shanty, I don't care where you are. Reach out your hand and believe for healing right now. Church, begin to pray. Begin to intercede for people to be healed right now. But the power of God is being released. I pray right now for healing to happen. Physical healing is coming. Emotional healing is coming. Relational healing is coming. I believe in faith, God, that these things are happening. Church, do you believe? Do you believe? Just stretch out your hand to the one that can bring it. Faith is being released, God. Would you, would you send power back for healing? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Whether you see it or don't, believe it. Right now, believe it. And watch what God will do. See, the Bible says that Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. And I don't, I don't know if you know that you're lost, but the Bible says we're all lost and we need a savior. We need, we need somebody to fix the problem. And Jesus does that for us. And so, so just for a moment, I want to give you a chance to respond to the finished work of Jesus. See, Jesus went to a cross for a reason, not just for healing, but for salvation as well. And so today you may say, I'm not saved. I, I know that. I know my relationship with God is not secure. I know I won't spend eternity with him. And I, I just want to ask you would, you, would you be willing today to respond after you've learned all this stuff about a God who loves you? Would you not be willing to reach out your hand and be saved today? And so what I'm asking you to do in faith is just simply say to the Lord that that's what you want. And so with heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to take a step of faith. And how you do that is on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Now, I do this because I want you to take a step. Because I say this all the time, is if you won't raise your hand in here, you won't raise it out there. And so right now, I'm asking you to take, nobody's looking around. Nobody's going to point you out, but you got to take a step. And so in faith, the Bible says, if you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that these things are true, that he will save you. And so right now, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise up your hand. So I can pray for you. On the count of three. One, two, three. Raise it up. God bless you. God bless you. I see those hands. Anybody online, just raise up your hand right now, wherever you are. You can put your hands down. Church, nobody is praying alone. We're all going to pray together. I ask if you raised your hand, would you repeat this prayer with me? We're all praying together. Heavenly Father, would you forgive me of my sins? I receive you as Savior. I surrender my life to you. Be my Lord. Change me from the inside out. Free me. Heal me. Make me whole. I choose this day to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, church, let's celebrate those that are giving their life to the Lord today. Let's celebrate those that are receiving healing today. In Jesus' name.